Welcome to today's COMED. It gives me great pleasure to be introducing Dr. Gabriel Kaplan, who will be talking to us about children who set fires, assessment and treatment. Uh, Dr. Kaplan is a graduate of the uh, National College of Buenos Aires in Argentina and also obtained his uh, medical doctorate from the University of Buenos Aires in Argentina. Uh, Gabe came to do his residency here in America, and that's where I first met Gabe. Uh, he completed his residency at New York Hospital Westchester Division, and then also went on to do a child psychiatry residency uh, at that same institution. Uh, following completion of that and doing some research, uh, Gabe moved over to New Jersey, like some of the rest of us, and became medical director of child and adolescent outpatient services at the Community Mental Health Center at the University of Medicine and Dentistry of New Jersey in Newark. Uh, Gabe is assistant professor of clinical psychiatry in the New Jersey Medical School and has done extensive uh, research as well as uh, writing in the area of impulse problems in children. And um, we thought it would be of interest, it's not an area we typically deal with, but to be updated uh, on modalities of treatment of, of children who, who set fires and, and the proper assessment. And at this point, I'd like you to please welcome Dr. Gabriel Kaplan. Thank you. It's a real pleasure to be here today. Um, I'm going to start by showing you the effects of fire. So we can uh, put on the first uh, video, please. But to give you an idea of the destructive uh, forces that uh, are involved in, in fire for those of you who may not have seen this type of uh, pictures before. Earth, air, water, and fire, the four elements, we maintain a delicate, balanced relationship with these elements. We need them to survive. We invite them to our homes, but in large quantities, they're lethal. One of the most glorified elements throughout history has been fire. It was perhaps our tenuous control over it, which began to differentiate our species from the rest of the inhabitants. We claim we took it from the gods and we have used to grow, but also to destroy. Some attribute purifying properties to it. It can stand for love and warmth, but also for intense hatred. The complex relationship between human behavior and fire begin early, begins early in childhood. Today I will present to you a summary of the current knowledge and controversies on, on children and fire setting, some data on my own research on this topic, and assessment and intervention approaches for youth fire setters. According to the New York Times, the US fire deaths have dropped steadily from 100 per million in 1918 to about 20 per million in 1990. However, this country still has one of the worst fire deaths rates in the world. Many believe that this is due to the attitude that fires are not really anyone's fault, rather than to resource, technology, or money issues. The US spends less on preventing fires than on fighting, uh, fighting them. American fire departments are among the world's fastest and best equipped. But this country relies more on technology than in laws or social pressure to deal with the problem of fire. In other countries, for instance, penalties for causing a severe fire can lead to life in prison. In Japan, a house fire may cause your neighbors to ostracize you. Other countries' building codes are also more strict. In Holland, every room must have two exits. In Switzerland, to deter landlord arson, insurance companies only pay if an identical structure is rebuilt. Alcohol consumption and poverty appear to correlate with increased fire death rates. For instance, Scotland, Hungary, Alaska, and American Indian reservations have higher death rates. Statistics show that 9% of deaths are caused by children playing with matches. Now I will discuss some terms uh, used in the literature to describe the fire activities of children and adolescents. These terms are curiosity, fire play, pathological fire setting, arson, and pyromania. The unsupervised lighting of matches by children has been termed fire play. What is the prevalence of curiosity about fire and fire play in children? 
McCaffrey studied 99 normal boys enrolled in kindergarten through fourth grade. 80% of these children were interested in fire. 45% had actually fire played, and 21% of the population had actually admitted to lighting small, easily extinguishable fires. Playing with matches only once resulted in a fire in about a third of the times. However, playing in repeated occasions almost invariably led to causing fires. Authors such as Gaynor and Feynman support the classification of fire setters into curious and pathological with the following definitions. The curious fire setter is typically a young boy from a relatively intact family. Curiosity, experimentation, and poor parental supervision are causal factors. This child will generally set only one fire alone and near his home. He will be afraid of the fire and will call for help. It is believed that a good educational program by parent or fireman is usually effective in eliminating the fire play. In contrast, children described as pathological fire setters are reported to use fires more deliber deliberately, repeatedly, and for purposes of revenge or anger. They are older, emotionally disturbed, and reside in dysfunctional families. They keep matches and lighters to be used later, and they show little remorse after burning things. The authors suggest that these children are in need of a comprehensive mental health service. This classification attributes significant weight to the motive of the fire setter and correlates such motive with an assessment of need for mental health services. For instance, those children considered as curious would not be referred to a mental health professional. This typology was established based in clinical and control studies and case reports. More recent research has not fully supported this typology, and I'll talk more about this later. Let's talk about arson for a minute. Can we have the first slide? Arson is a legal term, and it is not synonymous with fire setting. A set of specific conditions must exist before fire starting can be called arson. With the forgiveness of this court, I'll try to give you my best understanding of what arson is. A person is guilty of arson when he willfully and maliciously sets fires. The terms willfully and maliciously are important in this definition as they will differentiate arson from other forms of fires. Generally, a youngster who commits arson will be one with a motivation to harm and the intent to illegally set a fire. Motive and intent are the legal terms key to the definition of arson. According to Gaynor, motive can be further divided into normal and morbid. A normal motive is, for instance, setting a fire that accompanies another crime, such as vandalism. A morbid motive is one that reflects some form of psychopathology, such as delusions. A normal motive increases the possibility that the fire start was arson. Intent relates to the mental state of the person. In order to commit arson, the person must have been mentally responsible, that is, must have intended and participated in the act of fire setting with a mental state which is sound and sane. From the legal standpoint, mental responsibility includes consciousness, voluntariness, understanding of physical characteristics and consequences, goal-directed behavior, rational thinking, and appreciation of criminality. All six conditions must be present to determine mental responsibility. According to the FBI, juveniles account for 40% of arson arrests and convictions in the US. Arson is also the fastest growing crime in this country. What about pyromania? DSM-3 defines pyromania as one, deliberate fire setting in more than one occasion. Two, tension before setting a fire. Three, fascination with, interest in, curiosity about, or attraction to fire and its situational context. Four, intense pleasure, gratification, or relief when setting a fire. And five, fire setting is not done for monetary gain, for political reasons, to conceal a crime, to express anger or in response to psychosis. 
this diagnosis is not frequently made in children and adolescents. Can we turn off the slide, please? Several theories have been set forth in order to explain youthful fiery behavior. Gaynor has classified them into three major schools of thinking. Psychoanalytic theory, social learning theory, and dynamic behavioral theory. Freud suggested that fire was the symbolical expression of phallic urethral drives. A man's putting out a fire with his urine could be considered as an expression of a homosexual struggle with another penis. According to this theory, the association of sexual feelings with urination was associated with the thrill of starting and extinguishing fires. Kaufman further elaborated that setting fires serves to substitute for forbidden masturbatory fantasies. The psychoanalytic field believes in a connection between fire setting and sexual drives. Support for this theory is found in several uncontrolled studies that described an increased incidence of sexual conflicts in fire setters. However, more recent control research has not been as conclusive and the rates of enuresis and sexual problems have not differentiated fire setters from non-fire setters. It is possible that enuresis and sexual acting out are manifestations of poor impulse control, and as such can be found in fire setters, rather than being specific correlates of fire setting behavior per se. The social learning theory suggests that fire setting is a learned behavior. Children have acquired this behavior by modeling from their environment as they come from aggressive families. Patterson views fire setting as the end behavior in a continuum of antisocial and aggressive behaviors. A child who starts by lying may eventually progress to more serious disturbances such as fire setting. In support of the social learning theory, there's one study that found that the fathers of adolescent fire setters had fire-related employments. Other studies have documented the disturbed nature of families of fire setters. However, the theory does not explain why only a few of the children exposed to the firegenic environments do actually go on to set fires. Can we have the uh, slide number two? Dynamic behavioral theory is a more broad-based approach that takes into account the biopsychosocial model rather than attributing a predominant role to the environment alone. Feynman and Kolko are the main proponents of this approach. Kolko's model, which you have on, on the slide here, is referred to as the tentative risk model and is one that the author proposes with the understanding that there's a need to confirm it with further research. It is based in the interaction of three domains, learning experiences, personal repertoire, and parent influences and stressors. Each domain is subdivided into several components. Kolko's work then evolved into operationalizing these concepts and eliciting data on the domains by utilizing structured interviews. And I'll talk more about his findings later. Can we have the next slide? Gaynor proposes a predictive model. The underlying assumption on this model is that youthful fire behavior is part of the normal developmental process of childhood. This behavior is expressed in terms of fire interest and occurs in most children. Fire interest can lead to fire safe or fire risk behaviors. Gaynor proposes that fire setting can be predicted by specific psychosocial determinants, which are individual characteristics, social circumstances, and environmental conditions. Next slide, please. The author then lists risk factors that predict fire setting. However, these predictors have not all been validated by empirical research. These predictors are history, method, ignition, intention, target, and behavior. Gaynor claims that fire starting should be considered as pathological when four out of the six factors are present. Let's turn off the uh, slides. Despite hard work by the above mentioned theorists, none of the hypotheses have been entirely validated by clinical research. In my opinion, the work by Kolko is the most promising in that he uses controlled studies 
and has operationalized domains for other investigators to replicate findings and pursue further knowledge. I've referred to the literature a couple of times, and I'd like to tell you a little bit about some of the studies that are often uh, cited um, in uh, research. I have classified the studies as uncontrolled, retrospective controlled, and prospective controlled studies. Can we show the next slide? Stewart and Culver reviewed the records of child psychiatry inpatient unit and found 46 fire setters ages 4 to 13 years old among 322 children that made it over a period of five years. Scales were used for rating noncompliance, aggressiveness, and antisocial behavior. The subjects received DSM-3 diagnoses. Cases were divided into a group of children admitted solely for fire setting and a group treated for a variety of other antisocial problems in addition to fire setting. The authors found that most fire setters came from disrupted homes. Younger children set fires alone and at home. Older children set fires in groups and away from the home. And most children received the diagnosis of conduct disorder. NERCOM studied 21 prepubertal Australian children seen in an outpatient service. He found that most fire setters were doing poorly in school, had antisocial symptoms, and had disturbed parents. The author concluded that fire setting is a nonspecific response to a severe dry frustration and has multiple determinants. Van der Sol and Wiener studied 20 fire setters ages 4 to 11 who were treated as outpatients. The authors report that these children's parents had a significant amount of psychopathology and that the subjects also had other severe problems. These studies were valuable in that they offer detailed descriptions of children who set fires. Fire setting was not found as an isolated symptom, and many subjects seemed to have some form of conduct problem. However, the data cannot be generalized due to methodological problems such as the lack of control groups. Let's have the next slide. There have been uh, a few retrospective control studies. For instance, Strachan reviewed the records of 79 Scottish children ages 8 to 16 who came to the attention of the courts for fire setting. Fire setters were found to come from significantly disturbed family backgrounds and had poor paternal role models. Conley and Associates found that fire setters scored higher in the delinquent scale of the child behavior checklist. Heath and Associates reviewed the charts of 204 children. A child was defined as a fire setter if the parent checked fire setting on the child behavior checklist. Two, the clinician found that fire setting was more serious than just match playing. And three, that fire setting took place within the last year. The relationship between diagnosis and fire setting was not studied. The authors found that fire setters came from lower socioeconomic status and larger families, scored higher on child behavior checklist measures of externalizing, and lower on the checklist measures of internalizing. Heath and Associates pursued the relationship between fire setting and diagnosis in the second paper studying the above population. This time, they compared 32 fire setters with 32 non-fire setters. The authors found that conduct disorder fire setters scored significantly lower than conduct disorder non-fire setters on the checklist activity measure and significantly higher on the sum of pathology and externalizing. Jacobson examined the records of over 4,000 children in England. It was concluded that fire setters form a subgroup of severe conduct disorders distinguished by a younger peak age of eight, a higher boy-girl ratio, and more marked psychosocial disturbance. Showers and Pickerel studied the characteristics of 186 children. The study found that fire setters had significantly more conduct problems. All these retrospective studies provided valuable clinical descriptions and insight into the possible differences between fire setters and non-fire setters. However, their results also have to be considered within the limitations of chart review studies. Can we turn off the slide? Regarding the prospective control studies, Colco and Casting studied the prevalence of fire setting and related behaviors in a population of child psychiatric patients. 
An outpatient sample consisted of 164 children, while the inpatient sample included 133 children. Children were given DSM-3 diagnoses. And, children were, and, and parents were interviewed uh, to determine the fire setting status. That is, whether the child was a fire setter, match player, or a non-fire setter. Fire setters were more likely to play with matches and to show an interest in fire than non-fire setters. Let's have the next slide. In other studies by Colco and Casting, 343 children and parents were interviewed with the fire risk interview and the children's fire setting interview. According to the parents, the fire, settings, the fire setters were more curious about fire, more involved in fire-related activities, more exposed to peers and family involved with fire, exhibited higher levels of negative social behaviors, mild punishment was less effective, and were exposed to harsher discipline. The children, on the other hand, reported that they were more curious about fire, more involved in fire-related activities, more exposed to peer and family involved with fire, had greater knowledge about combustible materials, and were less competent in ability to respond to fire emergencies. They also had less supervision and discipline. Now, there is enough evidence to suggest that a significant majority of fire setters who come to clinical attention, but not all, carry a diagnosis of disruptive disorder, including conduct and attention deficit disorders. These are also the most common diagnosis in outpatient mental health consultations for children and adolescents. One strategy aimed at the prevention of fire setting has been to look for predictors of this behavior so that children at risk could be identified. The search for predictors can start by examining differences between fire setters and non-fire setters. However, most control research has involved comparisons of fire setters with normals or with very heterogeneous populations. Thus, it is possible that some of the differences found between fire setters and non-fire setters were not specifically due to fire setting, but could be attributed to other characteristics such as social class or antisocial behavior. We can turn off this slide. Although we know of the high prevalence of conduct disorder among fire setters, an issue not yet fully investigated is, once one has a child with a disruptive disorder in the office, can one predict whether this will be the child to engage in serious destruction by fire as opposed to another child with the same disorder? The controlled published literature has only one study that addresses the issue of differences between conduct disorders who set fires and conduct disorders who do not set fires. Colco and Associates studied 63 children who were inpatients in a psychiatric facility. There were 45 boys and 18 girls, ages 5 to 13. The subjects received DSM-3 diagnoses. The children were classified as fire setters if they or the parents acknowledge that the child has started a fire that caused property damage. The authors utilized one measure of psychopathology and two measures of aggression. There were a total of 33 conduct disorders. 20 were fire setters and 13 were non-fire setters. Differences emerged between the groups on parent report measures. On the child behavior checklist, conduct disorder fire setters were rated as more hyperactive, delinquent, and aggressive. They also scored higher on the externalizing scale and lower in the social skill scale. The authors speculated on the possible role of the fire setters impaired social skills as leading to selecting fire setting as an indirect mode of aggression. Now, behaviors can be viewed as an end product resulting from the interaction between environmental or internal forces and the individual's response to these forces. A factor affecting the nature of the individual's response has been termed coping mechanism. Although there are no published studies specifically focusing on the coping strategies used by youth fire setters, some data can be extrapolated from prior research in this field. The concept of stress 
leading to fire setting was discussed by Yarnell as early as 1940. More recently, Wooden and Berkey found that parents of fire setters reported that these children had experienced more severe stress in the six months that preceded the fire setting episode. Stressful antecedents to fire setting were also reported by several other researchers and included punishment, change in school, and family disruptions such as parental absence. In addition, there's data suggesting that fire setters have deficits in social and interpersonal skills. Personal, cognitive, behavioral, and motivational repertoires have been associated with the emergence and or maintenance of fire setting. It is possible that certain coping strategies could be characteristic of fire setters. If confirmed, treatment strategies could be aimed at changing the child's coping styles with lessening of fire setting behavior. Let's have the next slide. With these questions in mind, I designed a pilot control study of conduct disordered children who set fires. This study is funded by a grant from the foundation of UMDNJ. Briefly, a group of outpatient fire setting children with conduct disorder will be compared with a matched control group of conduct disorder children who do not set fires. The data are collected utilizing several instruments such as the DISC, the Diagnostic Interview Schedule, which is a structured interview which yields the SM3R diagnosis, the CBCL or Child Behavior Checklist, which is a checklist, checklist filled out by parents and their children, the CFI, which is the Children's Fire Setting Interview, which is a self-report or interview on the child um, on specific fire setting behaviors, which was developed by Colco and Associates. The FRI, or Fire Setting Risk Interview, which is the interview developed by Colco for parents asking about specific fire setting behaviors. And the COSI, the